All right, so a while ago I was checking out some of the original sound effects in Super Mario Brothers, and I transcribed them into Pico 8. Uh, you'll probably recognize a few of these. Got the fireball sound, this is the flagpole, and this is the power-up sound. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're as close to the original as I could get in Pico 8. And looking at how these were designed in Pico 8, reminded me of the idea of using sequences in your sound effects. Sequencing can be applied to music as well, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna mostly focus on sound effects. So by sequence, I mean a certain set of rules to determine an order of events. So one of the simplest in Super Mario Brothers is this fireball sound. And the sequence here is plus one octave for every row. So we've got uh, G1 and then G2, G3, G4 for four rows. You could play around with it and you could add a G0 here. But the reason I didn't have this uh, when I was transcribing it was because I thought that was too low. So it just lasts four rows in this case. Uh, the flagpole has another simple sequence. Uh, the sequence here is plus one semitone every row. So every one of these notes is uh, going up by one semitone. You can see it here. Now, because of the 32 row limitation in Pico 8, in order to reach A4 here, I added the sequence slightly uh, somewhere around here. And the sequence becomes a two-step sequence of plus two semitones and then one semitone. And then that's uh, repeated um, all throughout. And you can actually see the two semitones right here. But that was, that was uh, otherwise, I believe the original is just one semitones all the, all, all the way. Maybe it lasts uh, 40 rows or 42 rows. So for fun, if I was playing around with this, I might, instead of a, a one-step sequence of plus one semitones, I might do a one-step sequence of two semitones. So let's uh, start on A1 and... Um, that is that, and we're going to move up two semitones, two semitones up to G2, and then I'm going to, let's get rid of all of this so that you can see me copy and paste it. I'm gonna copy, paste, and then select this, and then shift I to move it up a semitone, uh, up 12 semitones, and then uh, copy, paste that, up, up uh, 12 semitones again, copy and paste, and we'll do it one more time and this, these notes are repeated, so I'll get out of that. So this is uh, another simple sequence of just plus two semitones every row. So this, this one is one of my favorites. It's a three-step sequence. It goes plus seven semitones, plus one semitone, and then minus seven semitones, and you can see it visualized here. And actually, these are really easy to create in Pico 8. You don't really need to know about semitones, intervals, or music theory to do this. So just as an example, um, let's just take, I don't know, three or four random notes. Uh, okay, that'll do. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, copy it here, and then let's move it up by one semitone. Now I'm going to copy it again and then paste it here and move it up by one semitone. And I'm using shift two to do that. And you can see it down in the bottom here. It pops up transposing plus one semitone. And let's do that four times. And let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that sounds kind of neat. Um, and then from here, you can play with sound effects. Now, I don't, I don't know exactly what all the steps are, but I know that in copying and pasting it, that there is some kind of sequence pattern that's happening here. Now, if you want, you can also get kind of meta with the sequence, and instead of transposing it up by one semitone every time, um, so let's take this and we'll transpose it up by, let's say, three semitones, and then we'll transpose it down by, whoops, and then we'll take that and we'll transpose it down, I don't know, five semitones. So then we're gonna do that again. So copy, up three semitones, copy, paste, and then down five semitones. And let's just do it one, one more time. Up three semitones, copy, paste, down five semitones. It go, the sequence is up, down, up, down, up, down. 
And let's uh, add an effect five and maybe make it faster. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe a different instrument. Right, so let's transpose the entire thing up an octave. Anyways, there's, there's lots to play around with. Um, and you can find these sequences everywhere in Super Mario Brothers. So uh, here, this is kind of like the, the best I could do with going down the pipe sound. And you can, you can kind of see how it's sequenced here. Um, and yeah, here's the power up sound. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a complete sequence, but you can definitely see that this pattern here is transposed here, but maybe the beginning here is... Uh, anyways, you can see that there's some kind of repeated pattern here. Uh, what else do I have here? Right, this was what the closest I could get to the block sound. Um, and you can see that there's um, like a, a sequence of uh, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. I don't know exactly know the semitones, but there's definitely some kind of repeated pattern here. Um, and I also have some music examples. So... So the hurry up music, you've got this uh, repeating pattern here that's uh, sequenced again here, and it happens three times. The general rule in music is that you have a pattern and you play it three times, and then on the third time it's changed or altered slightly. Um, the rule's slightly broken in this one. Repeated. and then it goes on to the rest of the phrase. But there's a sequence pattern as well. We have this bop, 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 repeated once, and then repeated again, except down in pitch. And what's this example? Oh, this is, I think, the flagpole example. And you can see the, the musical sequence here. Um, one last thing I'll mention is that uh, though pitch plays a really big role in sequences, you can also sequence other things uh, like the instrument, volume, and effects column. This is really easy to do in Pico 8 and trackers in general. So um, for example, let's uh, take this fireball sound and I'm just going to copy and paste it and repeat it. So I have this four step sequence. And I can complement that sequence in the volume column as well, not just in the octave column or in the pitch column. So let's go five, four, three, two, repeated. Can't hear much of a difference, but let's try, how about a uh, five, four, five, four pattern in the effects column. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit different. Uh, I don't have an example from a game, but this means that you can easily create kind of polyrhythmic sequences this way. So if you have a, a four-step sequence in pitch, then you could have, let's say, a three-step sequence in another column. So let's take 531, 531, 531, and let's repeat that and see what happens. Now let's slow it down a little bit. So we have a four-step sequence in pitch, we've got a three-step sequence in volume, and we have a two-step sequence in the effects column. So let's try something more complicated in the effects column. Let's try, uh, I don't know, five, four, one, four, one. So we've got a five-step sequence here, and we'll paste that through. I have no idea what this is gonna sound like. Yeah, anyways, there's lots of things that you can play around with here with sequences. Um, at the very least, they're a great starting point from which you can design and craft your own sounds. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, leave me some comments below and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.